I'm here with Anna Maria Horner, and I'm super excited because, I mean, everybody knows you. Well, thanks. And Maybe. I think now so. they will, because yeah. they're on your show. Well, no, they do. And really, when I think of you, I think of fabric. Awesome. So talk about your fabric to me. Actually, this year, 2016, marks 10 years of designing fabric, which I'm really, really proud of. I can't believe it's gone by that fast. And um, I felt like then it took me a long time to like fall into fabric, which, I mean, I was 33, I guess, when my first fabric line came out. And it was so perfectly made for how I like to be creative and also thoughtful and also kind of technical. Well, how did you get marriage. into it? Um, I was found by Donna Wilder. Donna Wilder. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, at Surtex, just mm -hmm. an industry show for service textile design. It was my first year exhibiting and she came across me and um, the rest is history, I guess, really, in terms of those details. But um, yeah, she just has a good eye. So are you, <laughs> are you with Free Spirit then? I am. I've been designing okay. for Free Spirit since then when they were originally owned by Fabric Traditions. Mm -hmm. Two years later, they got bought by Westminster Fiber. So all under the same umbrella of the Coates and Clark Company. But um, yeah, I've been with Free Spirit for 10 years. And But I guess what I was saying in terms of the combination of what fabric design requires isn't just like artistry, but also there's some technicalities. And it's just it's really well suited to what I enjoy, what I feel like I'm good at. And I can't believe I've been doing it for 10 years. Well, then let me ask you this. Um, the process for you, has it changed? I mean, have you gone to being on a computer versus perhaps painting stuff in the beginning or how the that combination go? of things has stayed the same which for me always involved translating a drawing to a digital file okay so it did go to the computer um, the learning curve was pretty steep and quick in terms of how to prepare the files to be printed um, I think what's changed for me is that I sometimes now more quickly go to the computer than I'm maybe used to. I think I used right. to fill out the whole entire design physically by making art and then it, taking it digitally. And now I can more quickly say, like, where in this process could I go ahead and get it on the computer? I'm getting better at that. But um, what I really enjoy about the process is I keep each collection. I try to do something I haven't done before. For nice. instance, the last, last in terms of how I develop it, the last collection that I turned in, which will be out this spring, called Mod Corsage, is the first time I actually used a photograph of a floral bouquet from my garden. I actually manipulated the photography itself to create a print rather than hand drawing it and that's the first time I've ever done that and that was just really fun for me so there's always little subtleties in how art gets made and I like to kind of keep it fresh so and try something new. Where might we find your garden? My garden? Mm -hmm. Under the ground dormant right now. Okay. <laughs> but but it is located, it will be popping up on two acres in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> Come visit. Broadway. Yes, yes, yes. And you also have really exciting news, too. About I do. Nashville. Nashville got so much better last May in 2015. <laughs> um, we opened Craft South, which is my Janome dealership. It's a workshop space, which we like to consider a destination. This year, we're hosting Jen Kingwell, Kathy Dowdy, um, Carolyn Friedlander. We host lots of different designers that come in and teach weekend workshops with us. We've hosted Denise Schmidt, just a little bit of everybody that's fabulous. I try to stay on the calendar myself, but in addition to being um, a Jimmy dealership and workshop space, we are a patchwork store, a yarn store, as well as an embroidery shop. So we're probably the only store in the country actually that stocks like the full anchor floss palettes, the full anchor tapestry palettes, like every single color. Do you have a store online too then? We do. Okay, it's awesome. craft dash -tap. But I just have to say Nashville, if I could just be, if I could be Samantha and go like this, I would be in Nashville. It's pretty great. Yeah. Well, where are you? You're not far. No, we live in California. That's not North, far. Northern California. <laughs> no, my, my airplane. plane. My airplane, yeah, my. The Your plane, plane knows how to get there. It yeah. does. You know, cattle call in the back. Yes. So what about this quilt back here? This is actually um, a free pattern that I designed for Janome that I work with, and um, it's called the Fan Dance. And it's just a little kind of modern curvy take on a Dresden plate where I just did half the plate and kind of just flipped the size in color categories to create sort of a undulating design. And this is your fabric, right? These are all my fabrics. This is a collection, I think mostly of dowry and true colors. And in fact, um, here at QuiltCon this weekend, I'm teaching this, right? I'm teaching the mini version, which is just the same thing, the same concept, just smaller so that we can accomplish it in class. And this was actually a kind of fun technique that I decided to do 
um, when I developed the quilt is while I was appliquing the half Dresdens down, I was also machine quilting. Oh, so nice. Okay, I did so the whole thing at once. So okay. basically, like I trapped those Dresdens into these long seams here, uh -huh. but then when I went to quilt it, I went ahead once I had these kind of floating Dresdens hanging out and it was all pieced together. I um, went ahead and layered up the batting and the backing and decided to do like this kind of little chicken foot stitch, this little applique stitch, but it was going through all the layers nice. as I was going around. Nice. So it saved some time. And I have to say it works much better in the small for format than <laughs> this giant it's one. manageable, right? Continually moving it around, but yeah, it's totally manageable. And I love hand quilting too, so I'm actually like mid-progress on these little hand applique bits that are still yet to be put on. But So here's what you need to know too, because um, you don't just work at your quilt shop. You don't just design fabric. You have a family that is bigger than mine. It's <laughs> bigger than average, probably, in this century. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And um, we have seven kids. And in fact, one of them, my oldest, is here with me this weekend, Juliana. She's 24 and a Pratt fashion graduate. Is she interested in getting into this biz or more fashion? She has her first line up with Free Spirit coming out this spring. Oh my goodness. She's helping us out in the shop and she does her own thing because she's totally cool, way cooler than me. So, so is there <laughs> anything else that we need to know about you? Um, Other than she's adorable, okay? Oh, you. Um, no, not too much, but yeah, we have, I have an amazing husband who's very supportive in my work and with the family too, and our kids go from 24 all the way down to two and a half, and um, I stole this off my <laughs> two and a half year old's bed to bring it for you today. Oh, so. thank you. <laughs> but I quickly you. replaced it with one that had a similar palette, but thought maybe, I'm going to be really proud of her if she noticed. So awesome. It's her first awesome. design awesome. test. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for thank coming you, here. Alice. You're teaching, you're busy. And doing it all. I'm in the Craft South booth. Okay, well. and again, we're at QuiltCon. I didn't say that. QuiltCon 2016. That's us. We're yeah. here. Pasadena. Totally doing it. Nice. So thank you so much. Thank you, Alex.